Hello and welcome back. As promised, what problem we are to see, first of all, is how do we evolve a fixed architecture fuzzy inference systems. Now, even before we start off this problem of fixed architecture fuzzy inference system evolution, it is important to realize what are the tunable parameters that are prevalent in the system. What are the parameters that the genetic algorithm will, or any other evolutionary technique for that say, will try to evolve out? In case of a fixed architecture in it, it was the weights and the biases that we were trying to evolve out while the architecture was fixed. The other thing is that what do we exactly mean by a fixed architecture? In case of the ANN, it was that the input neurons, the hidden number of hidden layers, the number of neurons in each hidden layer, the output neuron, that is what constituted the fixed architecture. What is the equivalent when we talk about a fixed architecture of a fuzzy inference systems? Now again, let us recall the discussion of the fuzzy inference system. There was some inputs. Again, be it fixed architecture or variable architecture, the number of inputs are always fixed and there were some outputs. So be it fixed architecture or variable architecture, the number of outputs will always be fixed. Now they were divided into some membership functions M1, M2, M3, M4. Again M1, M2, M3 and so on. And similarly the outputs were divided into a set of membership functions. This is what we call this a high, a medium, a low, sometimes very high, high, medium, low, very low and so on. This is what we divided out the inputs to be and that is how we similarly we divided out the outputs to be a high, medium and low, let's say a high, medium and low. This is what was the first part of it where all the inputs and outputs were distributed into some membership functions. Since we are dealing with the problem of fixed architecture, we state that the number of membership functions that an input is broken out into will be fixed. So there are some four membership functions here, some three membership functions here and so on, a three here, a three here. These numbers are all fixed because it's a fixed architecture. We exactly know what the fuzzy inference system is, only need to do some kind of tuning over it. So the number of membership functions are fixed. The type of membership functions are all fixed because again a high medium and low day any one of them can be triangular it can be Gaussian it can be Z, Z shaped it can be S shaped so all this information is constant all this information is constant it cannot be changed so firstly the number of membership functions they are fixed and Secondly, the type of membership functions for all the inputs and outputs, they are fixed. This was what was the number one and number two task in evolution and making out any fuzzy inference system. In deciding how many number of membership functions each one of these have to be broken down, their type. Again, be it any membership function, the membership functions always have some kind of parameters. So let me say that this was a low, this was low medium, this was high medium and this was high. Each one of these membership function has got some parameters. If it's any parameter like this over here, for a triangular membership functions, the start position, the median position 
and the end position are the three parameters. For a Gaussian curve, the mean value, the spread out here, these are the two parameters. And similarly, we see for all these membership functions, we kept on introducing some kind of A, B and C, sometimes even a D into the various membership functions when we were writing down the equations. When we were writing down this equation, there were a set of A, B, C, D, all these we had introduced into these equations. What the genetic algorithm is supposed to do is to find out optimal values of these A, B, C and all these. Genetic algorithm is ultimately asked, can you find out what would be these values of the membership functions? So again, the number of membership functions for all the inputs and outputs is fixed. The type of membership functions for all the inputs and outputs is fixed. But the individual values of the parameters of the membership functions, that is not fixed, that is what the genetic algorithm is supposed to do. We again take a very brief example. Suppose there was this input I1, I divided down like this into a set of parameters like this. This can be one possible representation out with 1, 2, 3, 4 membership function. The other thing can be if I do something like this. One, two, three, four. The other thing that I can do is I can mix this all up over here and then have some nice membership function out over here. So this would be the one, two, three, four. Whether this is optimal, whether this is optimal, whether this is optimal, that is what GA is supposed to try to do. Which one of these is optimal in nature? Any one of these triangles out here it can expand, it can move, it can do all these sets of things. I am supposed to find out which architecture is the best out of all these architectures. Similarly, if it was a Gaussian curve out here, I had some input and it had some Gaussian representation. I am supposed to find out whether this is optimal. This is optimal. This is optimal. Or let me say, this is optimal. Which one of these is optimal? Which one of them gives me the correct output? Now we saw that this task cannot be done manually. It is a lot of a thick job. It is a lot of hefty job that you keep on tuning the various membership functions. See what is the output again tune in. See what is the output. Go down the errors try to move up all these uh, fixes. It becomes a very, very difficult task to do. And that is why you need some automated technique to do this, what we call it as the genetic algorithms. That is what the genetic algorithm would be doing. A little bit uh, more into it. Now let me say sometimes I noted down what the error was. Now I do not know which input, which membership function I need to optimize, I need to tune it. There are so many of them possible, I do not know exactly what needs to be optimized and inside that membership function which parameter I need to change. If it's triangular, whether I need to move it up, whether I need to spread it up, I do not have any idea on to it. And as a result, I may sometimes make random guesses, no improvement recorded and all these things. So it's not possible to manually do this up and that is why we make use of the genetic algorithm in order to carry out this evolution or the fixing of the parameters of the various membership functions. That is the task that is given up to the genetic algorithms to do that. Now again let me say that because the task is done by genetic algorithm, so I will have to assume this to be a standard problem of genetic algorithm and that is how I would proceed. Once the in my problem solving methodology, once the number of membership functions are known, the type are known, I can tune the weights and biases by genetic algorithm. I assume again that the rules are precisely known. It's a fixed architecture, so I know exactly how many rules 
and what is the shape of each and every rule, I know exactly how they perform. I know exactly how the various rules are formulated, what is the architecture, what is the antecedent part, what is the consequent part. So I have precise idea because it's a fixed architecture. So this is the only thing that I need to solve. Again, because it is a problem of genetic algorithms now, I use a simple genetic algorithm to solve this problem. So I will see how can I represent the individual, how can I formulate the stopping criteria, how can I carry off over the genetic operators, how can I evaluate the fitness. That is all my entire approach will be. And again, what will be the most important part is the problem representation. The most important part of the entire evolution of a fixed architecture, fuzzy inference system lies in the problem representation part of it. So I know what are the uh, what is it that is to be optimized. So let me say that my what is it to be optimized? I know exactly how what is the number of membership functions, what's the type of membership functions of each of the membership functions that exist in my system, let the number of inputs be n and the number of outputs be n. Let the number of inputs be n and the number of outputs be n. Let me say that the number of membership function for input i1 let this, the number of membership functions for any input i1 be equal to, I'll say some uh, a1. Let it be a1, the number of membership functions for a1. So I know that there is an input i1 divided down into the total of a1 membership functions. Where a1 is precisely more. It's a constant. Similarly, let number of membership functions for input i2 be a2. And similarly, I have the number of membership functions for ai be ai. Let the number of membership functions for output o1 be b1. And similarly, for oi, I have it as bi. The number of membership functions, all of them are precisely known. Each one of these numbers is precisely known. It is known well in advance. So the total number of membership functions to be tuned using the genetic algorithm will be equal to a1 plus a2 plus a n plus b1 plus b2 plus b m so that is what the submission a i plus submission b i i varying from 1 to n over here and i varying from 1 to n all over here these are total number of membership functions to be tuned now we from the inputs and outputs we come to the number of membership functions of each one of them let me say what are the parameters that each function represents. What are the parameters that each function represents? Let me say that uh, all these membership functions were triangular in nature. May not be that uh, good uh, guess that everyone would definitely like the system to be more flexible where multiple membership functions can take in different types of membership uh, functions. But only for simplicity, let me take that all membership functions are triangular. Now, triangular membership functions, they have this property that they take three parameters. Only for the sake of uh, clarity, I'll write down the equation as well. I'll write down the equation of the triangular membership functions only to make sure that we have only three parameters and nothing else. So triangular membership function is 
f x equal to either a zero if x is less than a is equal to one if x is greater than c else it is b minus x upon x minus c otherwise if x is between a and c I am not sure they got in this equation but uh, this is what the equation uh, and if x is between a and b and similarly I have if x is between a and c what the membership function represents it represents c minus x upon c minus b it is b minus x upon b minus a out over here so it has got only three parameters a, b and c that it represents what I am supposed to carry forward is that it has got only three parameters to optimize these three parameters out over here I am supposed to optimize these three parameters this can be for any one of these membership functions there are total of these many membership functions for any one of them I am supposed to optimize these three parameters so let me say that the total parameters in system, in fuzzy inferno system is 3 into submission i1 to nbi plus submission i equals to 1 to nbi these are total number of parameters that need to be optimized each one of these parameters is nothing but a real number any one of these parameters is nothing but a real number if it's a real number and if I got a double vector individual representation then it will occupy a maximum of 1G in fact it will occupy exactly 1G so this is what is my size of individual this is what comes out to be my size of individual all the AIs and PIs are known and then MIs are this is what is the size of my individual so again let me say that I have in an individual I take in the same methodology where I decide a cohology of the various membership functions and I place them exactly one after the other so let me say that there was an individual like to this and it of course had various number 3.1, 2.5, 2.8, 7.9 and so on the first three numbers they represent membership function of the input i the membership function of the input 1 and membership function 1 the next three parameters what they represent is the membership function for the input 1 and the membership function 2 the third, what do they represent the membership function for the input 1 and membership function 3 so this is the first membership function of the input 1 this is the second membership function of input 1 this is the third input, uh, membership function of input 1 so like this I have groups of 3 like this all I will have two groups of 3 one group of 3 representing one membership function the first three into a1 numbers would represent the first input the next three into a2 would represent the second input and so on the first three into submission ai i equals to one to n would represent the inputs and the next into submission b i i 1 to n would represent the outputs so all I need to do is that I extract the three numbers I mark these three numbers over here and I draw a membership function out of it that is all that I need to do I take in three numbers I write it down over here and write the uh, have in a membership function drawn in between these 
And once I've got three numbers, I can write down uh, this membership function. A collection of all these membership functions gives me an input. And a collection of all inputs gives me the entire set of inputs and a collection of all inputs and all outputs along with all the membership functions give me the complete fuzzy inference system. So that is more again a uh, uh, similar thing that we carried forward in uh, the neural network as well where I kept, kept on putting down the individual weights and biases. Here also I keep on making in these, I keep on extracting out these and so I keep on making in the inputs and the outputs. So let me say that this was the condition out over here. I write down the first three inputs. I say it is out from this moment. This membership function is converted into this. I put, this will be the first membership function. I put down this. Let me say this is something like this. I write down mf for the input 1 membership function 2. I put down this. This is something like this. Let me say this was my input 1. Next to follow would be the input 2. So let me say I extracted the first three number, it was like this, this was the membership function for the input to membership function 1. I extract out, out 3 more, that would be something like this. So let me say this was membership function 2, membership function 2. Similarly, I write down all these membership functions for all A inputs and all the B outputs. A inputs and all the M outputs, I make in these membership functions. For all these A inputs and for these B outputs, by extracting out the inputs of 3, 3, I make in all these inputs and all these outputs membership functions and the rest part is done. If I got the inputs, I only have the rules with me. I only have the rules with me, so my fuzzy inference system is ready. And this is what is the genotype to phenotype conversion. This is what is the genotype and this is what is the phenotype. And this is the process of conversion. So that by this I have maintained some kind of individual representation mechanism. I have maintained some kind of individual representation mechanism. So once I have got this individual representation mechanism, all that I need to do is then to make it a population. So if it's I1, I'll make it some I2, I3, IN which are nothing but random set of uh, real numbers or with their lower and upper limits are the problem would define. I have got all these numbers I1, I2, I3 to IN. I can generate in a random population. This will be the population at time 0 or the initial population. I can write down a conventional stopping criterion. I can use the evolutionary operator mutation elite cross over or anything. It's a linear representation, it's a simple genetic algorithm. I can use this up. And I can calculate the fitness value. How do I calculate the fitness value? I convert my genotype to phenotype, so I have got some fuzzy inference system out over here. I give it an input data. I only have the target with me. I calculate the output, I take in the difference of them and based on all the inputs I will apply in a submission of the window that will give me a total error and that is what I need to find out. So as in case of neural network, if I have a database then of course I can use this up. Else they can be other means by which I can calculate the performance of this fuzzy inference system. And the performance is exactly a measure of the the performance exactly is a measure of the fitness value, so high performance means high fitness. If I go about with it, if I go about with the analysis of it, again it would lie exactly the same as in case of the neural network, wherein I should normally get the entire same trend that my genetic algorithms get. This happens to be the worst, the best and the average. I should normally get the same thing. This means that all of these have converged at some point. So that is what is the evolution of a fixed architecture for the inference system. The problem with fixed architecture for the inference system is that, of course, the architecture is fixed. We do not know who decides this architecture. It needs to be done by humans. And if it needs to be done by humans, it's again prone to error. 
it is very much prone to error and hence we would like to make this architecture also be evolved by some kind of computationally intelligent technique, some kind of evolution algorithm and that is what we have as the evolution of variable architecture fuzzy inference systems that is what gets to be known as the evolution of the variable architecture fuzzy inference systems now again the transition is same as was the case with a fixed architecture neural network and variable architecture neural network it's exactly the same thing that is applied in the fuzzy domain where the same transition would apply so here also we will first study what is it that we need to optimize how do I represent it as an individual and then the conventional genetic algorithm would uh, carry forward so I will not be touching upon the genetic part of it the only part that I would be touching is how can we carry forward an individual representation in a linear manner and if it is a linear manner then I can write down the conventions of criterion evolutionary operators and of course I can always convert my individual into a fuzzy inference system to compute the fitness value. So all that is left that needs to be discussed is how am I able to evolve a variable architecture fuzzy inference system. And I will see into how can we represent one of its individual. Again, let me say what are the parameters that we would like to optimize. So, first is that there are a set of inputs. There is I1, I2, IN, and there is O1, O2, up to OM using the same notations. This is divided into some A1. This is divided into some A1 membership function. This is divided into A2 membership function. This is divided into AN membership function. This is into B1 membership function, this is into B2 membership function and this is into Bm membership function. The only difference is that A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, B1, B2, B3, they are not fixed. They are not fixed, they are variable in size. When I deal up with this problem of fuzzy inferior system, each one of these is variable in size and because each one of these variables is variable in size we need to embed this information right inside the genetic individual we need to embed this information right inside the genetic individual now when I am embedding this information right inside the genetic individual another thing that I need to realize is that the type is again not fixed. The type of each one of these membership functions is not fixed. And because the type of membership function is not fixed, that also we need to optimize. Now normally we do not try to arbitrarily experiment between the types. So let me say that the type can only be either a triangular or it can be some Gaussian or it can be some pie shape or these limited type of membership functions. So if type can be either this, this or this. If it's type this then I call it 0, if I call it 1, I call it 2 and so on. With a finite type I will call it anything from 0 to a number t which is not type. And of course, t would normally be small. So let me say this was type 0 out here. This membership function was of type 0, this was of type 1, this was of type 0 again, this was of type 0, this was of type 1, this was of type 2, and so on. So, firstly, AIs and VIs are not known. Secondly, the type of each membership function is not known. So, this is additional information that I need to embed right inside my genetic individual. Again let me say that uh, any general membership function is membership function for the input i and the membership function number j. Let me say this is the representation. Let this type be represented by Let the type of this membership function be represented by the expression C 
body input tayo yung si function J. So I'll have a C11 here, a C12 here, a C13 here, a C14 here, and C1 AI over A1 over here, and similarly for all the various other inputs and outputs. Now whenever I say input I, it can also mean an output I. This thing is true for the inputs as well as for the outputs. So the first thing is time. The other thing that I need to consider is of course that once we have dealt with the number of membership function of each input and each output, their time is of course their parameters. If it's triangular, it would be these three parameters out over here. If it's Gaussian, it would be these two parameters and so on. For pi shape, it would be some these two parameters out over here. So any membership function will have some parameters as per it, their equation. So these are the parameters that I need to optimize. Again, because it's variable architecture, the type can change, the number of parameters can change. Some membership function would take only two parameters, some would take in as many as three parameters. Some can even take in a larger, but normally we see that in three parameters, all the membership functions, they can be accommodated. So the number of parameters are again variable, depending upon what type of membership function is used. I would now apply some kind of assumptions. I would apply some kind of assumptions out over here. Let the maximum number of inputs be n and maximum let the maximum number of membership functions for any input be n. So that means a1, a2, a3 and so on, they are always less than n. And similarly, let the maximum number of membership functions of any output be n. So I have b1, b2, b3 up to bn. They will always be less than equal to n. It's an evolution of a variable architecture of a inference system, but I'll have to keep a threshold that the number of membership functions can never increase this amount. I'll need to apply in some kind of threshold that the number of membership functions they can never reach a certain amount that is what I do up over here. So again all these membership functions they are restricted to or uh, number of membership functions they are restricted to a maximum value of n out here. I say that the type is restricted to a type t out here the type can in there between 0 to t that I've only spoken about, not a big assumption. And I always say that the number of parameters that a membership function would take, let there be t, 3. I say that maximum 3 parameters would be needed for any membership function. All the membership functions of each one of these t membership functions that I use, they will take in a maximum of 3 parameters. Of course, the type of membership functions, they are all fixed in regard to what my, the membership functions that my system can have. Each one of them is known. That which one of them, the, the entire list of uh, membership functions that my fuzzy inference system can play around with, can try various combinations with that aspect, so I know what exactly this number is. In case you are using some membership function that has four parameters, this number will be changed to four. So with all these assumptions and with this entire modeling, with this entire rotations, I should now be able to solve the first part of the problem. I should be able to solve out the first part of the problem. What the first part of the problem says is that find out the variable architecture membership function structure. Now whenever I am dealing with the uh, problem of variable architecture for the theorem system, I can break it down into finding out the specifications of membership functions and finding out the specifications of rules. The entire fuzzy theorem system can be fundamentally broken down into two correlated parts. One states with the membership function modeling, the other states with the rule modeling. 
So these are two different tasks that need to be done whenever I deal with fuzzy interference system. That is what we saw in the initial lectures of fuzzy interference system, where we were first doing the first part modeling the membership function and then the second part modeling of the rules. That is exactly what we do up over here. The first part deals with modeling of the membership functions. The entire notation for the same I have already written down. So the only task to be left is embedding this right inside the genetic individual. I only need to embed it somehow inside the genetic individual and that is the task that I carry forward next. So it is known that my genetic individual would now comprise of fundamentally two parts. The first part is dedicated to membership function modeling and the other part is dedicated to the rule modeling. This part of the individual we will see later, we only consider right now on this part of the individual. We haven't uh, discussed the notation of this part yet that we will see later, we will see only this part. So this part of the individual can again be broken down into a set of different parts. The first part determines the number of membership functions for inputs and outputs. This is what the first part does. It specifies the number of membership functions for all the inputs and all the outputs. The second part is the time and parameter specifications for inputs and the last part is the type and parameter specifications for outputs. So fundamentally I have broken down one of the general my first part of the individual representation I have broken down into three fundamental parts. The first deals with the number of membership functions and the second deals with the specification of the inputs membership function and the third deals with the specification of the output of the membership functions. This part of the problem is nothing but A1, A2, A3 up to AN, B1, B2, B3 up to BN. I I needed to embed this in the uh, number of uh, in the, uh, the number of membership functions. I had to embed it inside the individual. That is what I was supposed to because they were variable in number. So I simply written down n and n are constants over here because when I'm designing a system, the inputs are known and the outputs are known. The number of inputs and the number of outputs along with the ranges are known. That is an assumption that we have been carried out. Uh, so the n and m are known. I write out all these three numbers, uh, m plus n numbers out over here. The size of this individual is m n and it contains nothing but it teaches that denote the number of individuals here and each one of these b a1, a2, a3, b1, b1, b2, b3, b n must be less than m. That is again what we dealt with. So these are integers that lie between 1 and n. So the first part has been done. The next part deals with how do I write down the specifications for the inputs. The specification for the input would be nothing but the specification for membership function 1, the specification for membership function 2, the specification for membership function 3, up to the specification of membership function n. Now there is a capital N out over here. There is what a small n out over here. What a capital N out over here it denotes is that all my membership functions, all my membership functions, it the number of membership functions it lies anywhere between 1 to a1 for the input 1. It lines up between any time this number for the first input.
the number of inputs on in out here, I again made a little bit of mistake. If I am going in for membership function 1, membership function 2, membership function 3, it will be for membership function n for the input part of it. So all these inputs they lie right across after one each uh, they lie across one after the other. They lie across exactly one after the other and the number of inputs are fixed, so they will be exactly n pass to it. If I pick up any one part of it, if I pick up any one part of it, I'll say that my membership function for the input 1 is nothing but my membership function for the first membership function for the input 1, my second membership function for the input 1, and my it is my nth membership function for the input 1. So this entire range is divided across multiple inputs and each one of these inputs is divided across multiple number of membership functions. That is exactly how we saw in the previous uh, approach of the fixed architecture fuzzy inference system. So I want to repeat that discussion. First, uh, the entire individual was divided between inputs in the other part between the outputs and then each input was divided between its individual membership functions. So I will get in any membership function that I need to model. So let me say I am trying to model membership function for the input i and the j membership function. Now the membership function for the input, the j membership function for the input i would be nothing but a set of integers. The first integer always denotes the type which is nothing but cij, this is any number between 0 to t or let's say 1 to 0 to, uh, 0 to t or 1 to t whatever is the modeling. This is what denotes the type of membership function. The other denotes the parameters of this type of this membership function. They denote the parameters of this type of this membership functions. So here what do I do is that in place of making groups of 3 as I had done in the previous case, I take in groups of 4. I make in groups of 4. In place of groups of 3, what I have done is that I have tried to make in groups of 4. Each one of these groups I extract out when I have to make it a membership function, I extract out uh, a group of 4. I first look at what the type is. I first look at what the type is. Once I know what exactly the type is, then I try to use this information in order to write draw the membership function using these three as a parameter. So I have noted down the type, I see what these parameters are and based on that I draw this membership function or this type. If this is triangular, this would be a triangular shape. If this is Gaussian, it would be a Gaussian shape. If this is a pi, it would be a pi shape and whatever. Using these parameters. Now one point of discussion that I evidently that in my uh, like while I was writing out this N is that I have used the word capital N out for here. Now whenever I am trying to use a simple genetic algorithm, the size of the individual is fixed. The size of the individual is fixed. So I need to know what how much information that I can embed right inside this individual of this size. I need to embed all this information within this size that has been pre-computed. So all I do out before I start off with this is I find out what would be the size of each and every constituent part of it. I compute what would be the size of each and every, uh, what would be the maximum size possible of each and every constituent that I am speaking about. 
When I'm dealing with this, the size is n plus n, that is known in advance. It cannot be less, it cannot be more. But here the size is variable. Because the number of membership functions, they are variable. So I say is that, what I say is that, let me try to find out what is the maximum size possible. And what I would do is that, once I ensure that maximum size is what I have reserved up as the space here, then any individual would be able to fit inside. All the information would be able to fit inside. If on the other hand I do not take this n out over here and take this as n minus 3 and minus 4, then there would be some membership function that I would not be able to represent inside this information because of shortage of space in this, gym, in this part. I'll try, I'll finish up my space out over here. I have a membership function I cannot embed it after this because the space allocated has been fixed. This is what could be conventionally called as a fixed array if it's uh, any programming language implementation. So the size is not variable in of this individual. So for that sake, I try to find out what is the maximum possible and I reserve in space for that individual. So that my basic task of embedding all the information inside the genetic individual is done. Once this task has been done, I know the genetic algorithm in its own way of optimization will be able to optimize change in the various parameters and all those exciting things that it does. The other thing of course that I need to be sure is that the various parts they lie exactly one below the other when I do cross over. So suppose there is a cross over between these two, uh, one, this individual and another individual, always the first part needs to cross over with the first part, the second part needs to cross over with the second part and the third part needs to cross over with the third part and here also the parameters preferably to cross over with the parameter and the type to cross over between type. So everything needs to be head on head. And that is why I keep this size as maximum possible value and the format exactly the same that is groups of 4. So a group of 4 will cross over between one group of 4. So I will have type width inside the type width, the parameter genes inside the parameter genes. So they will be all head on head. Why? In fact that is what it was about this exactly similar when we did about the connection bits being stored in case of an evolutionary neural network. The fundamental is exactly the same. In evolution later, we had some weights being stored whose connection was not there. Here also we will have an additional membership function being stored. Suppose at any scenario, my first input has got in A one number of membership functions. I reserved in space for capital N and there is much smaller number, small A1 that I use. So anything after filling all these A1 membership functions here, whatever is the extra space left, I can ideally write down all random numbers over there. I can write down all random numbers over there. It does not matter what do I write down. Of course they need to be legal. They need to be legal just because of the evolution operators that would be applied. But in general they would not affect the system. I can write down any random numbers over there. So I have, of course, stored in extra information that is not needed. There would be numerous conditions I do that, but there would be no conditions in which I do not store in some kind of information in this representation. The next, of course, to follow is the output that is exactly in the similar manner. I carry forward exactly in a similar manner. One good practice that is followed in specification of parameters of the membership functions, we saw that there are three parameters out over here that decide the membership function value, the membership function exact curve, its orientation, its location, that there were three parameters reserved. What we normally do is that two of the parameters they represent the extreme. They represent the extreme. So if it's a triangular membership function and I have need to take three values, the first parameter would be this, the second parameter would be this, and the third one may normally represent an a mean value. If the same thing if I change the type to Gaussian in nature, 
So my these two parameters may be approximately here and the third one may be here. And once these three parameters are known, I know for the curve where in the extremes lie, where does the mean lie, and then I try to heuristically draw out the plot. This is sometimes followed. Sometimes only A and B are specified. And as two parameters and the third parameter is implement type specific. So if it's triangle, the third parameter will be used to store this value. If it's Gaussian, it will be used to store the spread. Sometimes the third parameter can be variable and two parameters they specify the extremes. What this has a profit in? Suppose there was a system in which there was a CIJ out over here and three parameters over here, A, B and C out here. If I change the CIJ by mutation to any value, from 0 I change it to 1. Let's say there was a mutation operation and this was changed. Let me say this was again a very good system, that's why this was changed to this. With this kind of representation wherein I store in the mean and the extremes, I store in the mean and the extremes with this kind of representation what happens is that the resultant system will be almost the same with slightly better modeling. So as a result the new individual that I get will mostly follow the norms of the previous uh, individual and therefore I am likely to get a much better optimization. There is very little difference between the two individuals where I was storing the extremes and the mean position. And hence, changing the CIJ went from 0 to 1, from triangular to Gaussian will have very little difference, the new individual will also be very fit. But on the other hand, if this parameter has been implementation specific, changing in C would have meant that now what is represented as C out here, that is this physical location is represented as sigma out here, and that is where it would have expanded in and made the curve very arbitrary in nature and the fitness value could have dropped because of this. Many times in place of mean, uh, mean and uh, the two extremes what we store then we store in where does the function take in a zero fitness value, so this, and where does it take in a fitness value or membership value of one. We store these three locations. Where does the membership value reach zero and where does the membership value reach one, we store these three locations. So again, numerous ways in which uh, this modeling can be done. The next important thing that I discuss is what is the size of this first part of the individual. So we've seen that the first part has a size n plus n. The first part has in a size of n plus n. The second part is for the in input modeling. The total number of inputs are n. Number of membership function for input i is a i the number of now every membership function takes in four parameters so there are four parameters for every membership function so what would eventually happen out to be is that 4 times submission AI would be the size of this part of it. This part would be the number of membership functions out over here and every membership function takes in 4 parameters. This would be 4 times submission b i and that's what gets the entire genetic individual, the first part of it. So we basically dealt with how do we solve the first part of the problem that is the specification of the membership functions. An entire discussion or regarding the analysis of the same system goes exactly as we did with the traditionalist approach of the neural networks. What I would do out here is that I will take out this number over here, I will take out what a1 is, a1 is stored right inside here. Then in groups of four, I will take out this number, I will draw the first membership function, I will take out the next four, I will draw the membership function, I will take out the a8 four, I will draw the membership function, 
that is what gets to be known as my first input. Similarly, I will make it all the inputs and all the outputs. After taking out all AI inputs over here, there will be some extra space available. There will be some extra space available. The magnitude of the space would be 4 times n minus a i. I will completely not consider that. I will not look at that. I will not give it any look. I will simply switch over to the next part of it. Where I will have a2. So this much space I will simply over it. Once all the AI numbers have been read over here, once all the four AI numbers have been read out over here, I travel some distance, I do not look at it because those are extra information, those are extra suffix to this uh, neural network, to this fuzzy inference system in the virtual representation that I need not consider. Those were only there because the size of the number of membership function requirements could have been more. I take only the AI of them and leave the rest n minus AI blank. And similarly, I do for all the other inputs and all the other outputs. So this is what is the membership function modeling part of it. The other part of it that uh, we have to deal with is how do we represent the rules? And that would be all for the representation with, uh, in which the entire pattern of using genetic algorithm on fuzzy inference system, the evolution fuzzy inference system would be mostly over. So we deal with the rules part of it. So there is an R1, there is an R2, there is an R, let's say, K. The number of rules are not known. Because it's a variable architecture, the number of rules are not known. And because the number of rules are not known, we need to model each uh, one of them separately. Again, let me say that the total maximum number of rules, we will apply another assumption over here, we will say that the maximum number of rules that any system can have, let that be L. L is the maximum space that any system can take and the maximum number of rules that any system can have. So now, how is a rule written? It is some antecedent part followed by some consequent part. Both of them are separately modeled. This contains the inputs and this contains the outputs. And that is how this entire system would work. We model out the input separately, the output separately, the antecedent part of it separately and the consequent part of it separately and we stuff it up all inside one particular individual that we have as the second part of the individual representation or the common representation. Now how do we model the inputs and how do we model the outputs or the antecedent and the consequent is something I will not be able to fit inside this R so we will transfer this discussion to the next R of study.